Okay, uh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mihir, um, and I work in Misha Lukin's group on uh, realizing quantum repeaters with quantum memories. Um, and so I'd like to describe a little bit the path towards a, a full-fledged quantum repeater. Um, and so uh, probably many of you remember from kind of uh, the status of our experiment before uh, the CQN program, um, what we were able to do was use a single uh, quantum memory, a silicon vacancy center integrated uh, into a nanofabricated diamond structure, uh, which has long coherence times and an efficient optical interface. Uh, and these properties just already with a single quantum memory were enough to exceed the repeater list bound. Um, but this sort of scheme where you just use one quantum memory is not really enough to, to build a large scale quantum network uh, extending over multiple nodes and long distances. Uh, and so really the next step is to scale this up so that you can distribute entanglement between remote quantum memories, uh, and then ideally make multiple copies of that entanglement, have local registers where you can do error correction and purification. And so some of the outstanding challenges, uh, one major challenge, uh, and this is true of any kind of solid state system, is that most of the schemes to generate remote entanglement require detection of an indistinguishable photon. And the fact that there's a large inhomogeneous distribution. So you see here lots of these, these features, they're all at different frequencies. These are different emitters that have different local environments. This makes it hard to generate entanglement between different color centers or solid state emitters. Um, the second challenge, and this has to do with entanglement purification, is that you need to have really good local control of your, your register such that the local operations you use to do your entanglement purification, uh, as well as things like readout, don't actually disturb the quantum states you're trying to store. Um, so there have been kind of pioneering experiments already at Delft showing this entanglement purification, but with very, very little kind of gain in terms of the overall entangled uh, state fidelity, because you really need to push these fidelities to be very high. So these are the challenges that we've been tackling over the last year. Um, so I'll just share a little bit of our kind of uh, preliminary results. Uh, so in terms of entangling distinguishable emitters, uh, like I mentioned, most schemes require detection of an indistinguishable photon using a type of interference such that when you get a detection click, you don't know which of the two emitters it came from, thereby uh, creating entanglement between the two. So we've actually taken this scheme and we've translated it now uh, into the frequency domain. Uh, so if you have two emitters that are at different frequencies, you can now excite these two emitters with a frequency superposed pulse. Each frequency component is resonant and interacts only with one of the two emitters, this pulse can actually travel through the same fiber uh, and hit the emitter sequentially, meaning you don't have to interferometrically stabilize any paths. And then you can use an electro-optic modulator to recombine the two pulses into the carrier, uh, filter, and then detect a heralding signal. And so this is kind of the frequency domain version of the, the standard interference experiment to generate entanglement. Uh, and uh, we've now done this experiment with silicon vacancy centers that are detuned by almost 10 gigahertz from one another uh, using commercial EOMs, and it works with an operational fidelity of about 81%. Um, so this is already good enough as a first step towards then uh, doing entanglement purification. And really the hope with the CQN and our collaboration also with Marco Lonchar, is we can take advantage of his highly nanostructured lithium niobate devices, which can operate at much higher bandwidths and have much higher efficiencies to really push this to span the full and homogeneous distribution of really any solid state emitter. So this is a powerful new technique um, that is now working. Uh, the second development is getting our local control of our small uh, multi-qubit registers to work very well. Uh, previously, people have used color centers along with nearby nuclear spins in the environment that are kind of stochastically uh, detected and sensed. Uh, we've switched over to actually using an isotope of silicon, the silicon 29, which comes with a spin one half system. Uh, and we can now get very high fidelity two qubit gates in reasonably uh, fast operational times with still quite good overall coherence properties. So we're, we're hoping that now with this ability to kind of deterministically have two very good qubits, we can always implant an address uh, with high fidelity. Uh, as well as this ability to now entangle any arbitrary pair of silicon vacancy centers, the yield of our experiments and being able to entangle two silicon vacancy centers will go up and our ability to purify this entanglement 
uh, now should be there with uh, these fidelities. So that's really the next step.